Here we go, my dear. I'm dealing with a lot of emotions and triggers involving abandonment issues, and I've been working on addressing those issues, but sometimes they just feel insanely powerful. My marriage of 15 years and dynamic of 10 has ended, and it ended in such a way that it has really played hell on my self-worth. Oh, it feels like ocean waves crashing into you, and you can't stand up no matter how hard you try. That being said, aside from vagus nerve exercises, which do help in triggered moments a lot, just general trauma work that we have been over, is there anything more I can do? We love you, Mathos. We see you. We honor you. And uh, thank you for trusting us and being so vulnerable. And I think I have, I think I have some advice for you that'll really help, but it's going to include a story. So here we go. Sigmund Freud back in the 40s was asserting that the end all be all supreme ultimate goal in a human's life, their psyche, their drive was pleasure. That the ultimate aim goal wiring of the human experience was to seek pleasure, to seek comfort, all of that. Well, there was a contemporary of of Freud's back in the day, Viktor Frankl, who was basically saying the opposite. And he was an Austrian uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, and he asserted something completely different. Where Freud was saying that the ultimate, you know, goal, aim of humanity was pleasure, the, the seeking out pleasure, comfort, whatever. Viktor Frankl actually said, no, no, no. The highest aim of the human experience is meaning, purpose, to leave a legacy. And it's only when we do not have that meaning and that purpose, when we feel like we have no meaning, when we feel like we have no purpose, that we accept pleasure as the supreme goal, aka why social media is so very addictive, isn't it? Because we don't actually have to do anything worthwhile in our lives. We can go on social media. Get that dopamine hit by policing other people, othering other people, being activists and making a difference. We're not making a difference. We're not doing anything. What we're doing, we're getting that dopamine hit because we don't have meaning. We don't have purpose. So we accept pleasure in its place. Okay. So World War II happened and Viktor Frankl was a Jew. And he was in three, not one, not two, but three concentration camp. He survived. And at the end of the war, when he was released, he went on a speaking tour. And Viktor Frankl on this speaking tour asserted something that was absolutely mind-blowing to me. He asserted two things. Life is beautiful and life has meaning. After surviving hell on earth. And the people back in his day, his contemporaries and his colleagues were so blown away by this. How can this man have this perspective on life after what he's been through? Rocked everyone's world to the point where there was this, there was this hospital in Austria that had this epidemic of suicidal youth. Youths, teenagers who didn't feel like they had purpose or meaning. And there was an epidemic of depression and anxiety and suicide. But his colleagues, his contemporaries heard so powerfully the words that this man was speaking after the hell that he went through. And they said, there's something to this. We're going to bring him on, see if he can do any work. So they hire him at this hospital. And he takes these these kids, these youths, these adolescents, these teens, through what he coined, what we now call logotherapy. And logotherapy, according to Viktor Frankl, had three points. And when he taught this to his patients at this hospital, not a one died on his watch. Not one person, not one of the youths that he was hired to help committed suicide. Depression lifted, anxiety lifted. So if you want, I would like to share the three things that Viktor Frankl taught those youth. Three things. You ready? 
project, people, and purpose. The first thing that Viktor Frankl said was a project. You need a task. You need a goal. Not just a hobby. Something that inspires you. Something that when you wake up in the morning, you go, you know what? I, I want to work on that. I want to keep I want to keep moving forward on that task. I want to keep chiseling away on that project because I see value in this project. You need a project. You need a goal. So that would be the first thing, Mathos. What is your project? What is your goal? Tangibly. So that's the first point. The second point is people. In other words, you need a community, which is why we exist. All right. But what I specifically mean by community is not logging on to Twitter and bashing people you don't agree with. That's not a community. Engaging with other people as broken, toxic, and dysfunctional as you and all wallowing together is not a community. Okay? Connecting shallow and talking about nonsense is not a community. A community is people you can be intimate with. A community are those people that you can cry with. You can break down in front of. You feel totally free to be yourself and express whatever you're going through. And you know that you will be loved and supported and safe. That is a community. And if you do not have a core group of those kinds of relationships in your life, build them and start building them now. And the third one is purpose. Specifically, purpose in your pain. All right? And this is how I think Viktor Frankl made it. We can't ever imagine what he went through. Certainly us who, who have lived here in America, we can't fucking imagine the horror, the hell that that man went through. But this was the key. What's the purpose in, the, in this pain? What's the purpose in my pain? My pain, here it is, my pain needs a redemptive quality. And the redemptive quality of pain is purpose. What is the purpose in my current pain? If Viktor Frankl did that, surviving three concentration camps, I think we can do it too. But the thing is, we have to be really honest. We have to go, I'm in pain. <laughs> and this is a really hard season. And this is a really dark season. And we, we don't deny it. We allow ourselves to fully feel it. Because there's no shame in fully feeling it fully feel it, but also go, what's the redemptive purpose in this? What am I learning from this? How is this going to make me a better person in the future? What is this teaching me about relationships? What is this teaching me about myself? What is this teaching me about my needs? What is this teaching me about where I need to grow, where I need to heal? What is this teaching me about what I need to receive from others? What is this teaching me about where I maybe need to give? What is this teaching me? What is the purpose that I can get out of this pain? Because that's the thing. If all you're doing is looking at your pain and your pain does not have a redemptive purpose, yeah, you are left with nothing but anxiety and fear and heartache and depression. But if your pain has a redemptive quality, purpose to it and you know that yeah this fucking sucks there is a purpose in this and on the other side of this i will be this i will be better i will be stronger i will have learned more i will have come out of this with a different perspective what is the redemptive purpose in my pain? 